All right, so I got the bottom tub fully welded, all the bottom sections, so I had her flip on the side, making sure everything is nice and seamed up nice and well. Obviously, I got some distortion up on the top here. You see that or not? That's all right, I can uh, tweak everything. It's only eighth inch steel. Another major area of distortion was the front up here where I don't have it capped off. You're probably dealing with the, oh, I don't know, three quarter inch of distortion. So what I'll do is I'll just get the sledge or I'll get my rosebud heated up, wing it back down and call it good. But overall, it was kind of a pain in the ass because this uh, welder has like, I don't know what the duty cycle is on it, but it's pretty bad. I can only weld for about 20 minutes and it overheats and then I go off and do something else. But overall, went together pretty well. So everything's nice and watertight. Won't have to worry about the bottom until I paint it, but that'll be for a while. Got the uh, drop axle plates down and welded too, at least just in uh, partial areas. All right, I got her flipped back down. I got her resting on concrete blocks right now. Pretty much what I'm going to do now is pretty much finalize our uh, axle mounting points. I'm going to fully weld the tubes up, weld the spindles on, and weld the gussets, get that all finalized. And then basically finish the rear. Got to put my tubes in and then I got to fill that gap. I think I'm just going to stick a piece of quarter inch rod in there and plug it up that way finalize welding that obviously do the other side for the axles that should uh, take pretty much most of the day I think and yeah everything should be nice and watertight and then I can mount my wheels and then once I get the wheels once it's all rolling and everything uh, I'll slip the differential in all right, so I got the uh, all the stub axles fully welded and gusseted. I got my walking beam stub right here. I didn't actually gusset this guy. I didn't think there was a need to. It's just a short, stubby-looking guy. So this is going to bend before this does, so it didn't do anything there. I did do a little bit of tweaking on the upright for the rear axle here. I was a little worried about this 3 8 plate uh, twisting from the old uh, torque and stuff. So what I did is I added these uh, half inch bars right here to help mitigate the torsion action. But everything was gusseted below there, um, gusseted here, gusseted here. So, cause this is going to be the one that's going to take all the shock loading cause there's no uh, distribution of stresses here. It's all point loaded right on this guy. So I guess in the future to get rid of these uh, janky looking things, I would increase this uh, from 3 8 to half inch or maybe even 5 8 just to play it safe from a torque action but yep and I cleaned up all the grease seal races and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna start assembling all the hubs and bearings greasing them up all the rolling elements have been installed on the chassis all greased up ready to go walking beam mounted roller hubs mounted all greased up I used some uh, super tech Waller world marine grade grease just because of the nature of this thing it's gonna be in the water a lot Kinda don't like these little cheap Chinese grease caps, they always dent up on you, no matter how careful you are. But it is what it is. Basically I'm going to leave it as is for now. When I do test this first, I'm not going to paint it when, before I test it. Just because I might need to add some steel or weld some stuff on until I paint it. And so, I'm going to test it first, make sure everything is good to go, then I'll paint this whole thing. And basically what I'll do, I'll probably just pull the walking beam off. I'll leave all the hubs in place so I won't have to open those up again. So, as it stands, that's how it's going to be. So, after that, I'm going to install the wheels and it will be a rolling chassis. Alright, it's a rolling chassis now. Got all six wheels installed, tightened up. I did have one minor fuck up. That axle is not cambered straight. As you can see, it's actually cambered the wrong way. It's like that. Whatever, we'll just have to see what that does. 
what I can always do is I can, uh, becomes an issue, I guess I gotta cut it apart and tap it back down, but as it stands, I'm just gonna leave it as is. We'll see how resilient the system is to, uh, human error. But overall, everything lined up pretty good. Wheels lined up good. We'll have to see how the uh, sprocket lines up with the differential axle installed. Well, it just started raining, so I moved everything inside. Got a bunch of crap on the tractor right now, just to keep it nice and dry under one roof there. Rolling chassis, all wheels lubed up, bolted up, ready to go. Still need a little bit more air in them. Air them up. Differential, tack welded to the frame right now. You can kind of see the uh, large height difference between the drive sprocket and the leading road wheel. It'll be interesting to see how the track's going to have to droop over that. Hopefully it won't cause any issues. But the reason I did that was to get enough clearance from the bottom of my tub to the bottom of the pump in there to make sure it's still easily serviceable when you need to drain fluids. Plus, the other thing was I flipped it upside down because it's going to be rear engine drive. So that doesn't help you at all. But yep, everything went together pretty good. So The only two big issues I see happening with this machine is A, it won't want to turn, or B, when it does turn, it'll start throwing the track. So I have contingencies for both. If that does occur, it'll be a pain in the butt to instill, but I think it should go pretty good.